Okay, I'm gonna give you 10 tips to make your home feel like it was styled by an interior designer. These 10 tips are things that can make a difference in your home and give you that ambience and that feeling like it was styled by a professional interior designer. My name is Michalina, I love all things architecture, interior design, home design, and these are 10 things that I noticed that make a huge difference in homes. You can use these tips whether you're renting or whether you own your home. So this first tip makes a world of a difference, but the first tip is to hide the ugly. So these are things like wires, Kleenex boxes, cords, remotes. You wanna hide them. I know you've heard this before, but hiding or rather concealing these items that are not so aesthetically pleasing make a huge difference to the overall look and feel of your space. Obviously, it's still important to keep your space functional. Use cable covers to hide your TV cables from your wall-mounted TVs or wall-mounted sconces. You can easily paint these covers as well to match the painting on your wall. You can hide your TV remote in your coffee table drawer, but if you're someone like me who likes to just really be able to grab your TV remote to turn it on, I like to put like a decorative tray or a dish on top of your coffee table. And this is somewhere where you can kind of just place down your remote and you'll always know where it is. Another thing I like to do in the kitchen that really makes it feel decluttered, remove the original containers and packaging from the items on your countertops and place them into containers that can be refilled. I really like the clear sealable jars that you can get from Amazon. So you can do this for pasta, oats, your different health powders. This can be really cool, especially if you have something like spirulina and that blue algae beside each other. So there's nothing more luxurious as an adult or for me than having a jar full of cookies or M&Ms. Probably not good for the diet though, but you can also replace dish and hand soap from the original containers into amber or green dispensers. Use woven baskets to store blankets it's uh, dog toys or cat toys. I don't know if you can do this for kid toys because I'm sure they leave them, but if you have a good tip for keeping kids' toys organized, leave them down below. So one thing I find really useful is to place a dish or tray, is to have a dish or like a tray in every room to have a place where you can place down items and, and keep all these items together in one place. So things like car keys, sunglasses, your wallet. So this tip alone can go really far in improving the style of your space because unnecessary clutter can weigh down the visual weight of a space. My next tip that I don't think is usually thought of beforehand, but always think of your furniture layout in a way where it encourages people in a space to easily have a conversation. So things like a single couch in front of a TV doesn't exactly invite people for conversation. These two people on the couch are already awkwardly too close, they're facing the same direction, and they actually have to turn their bodies on the couch to have a conversation. And then even more awkward is if you have a group of three and then, and then the two people on the ends have to talk over the third person. This might not seem like a big deal, but if you want your space to be somewhere where you really like to hang out with your friends, or you like where you really like to have people over, it's definitely something to think about. When you're thinking about your living, living room, think about the seating around your coffee table. You wanna have enough distance between seating so that the people don't have to feel like they need to twist their bodies or feel too close or too far away. So this is exactly why kitchen islands work so well. You can have the guests on one side of the island where they can watch the host cook and prepare their meals, but they work really well because the host is on the other side and they're facing the guests preparing the meals and this allows both people to have easy conversations. Something you can do in your living room is to introduce one or two comfortable side chairs or something like a poof or a big pillow that can be able to be used as seating. Once you have the furniture and the seating laid out, sit in those spots yourself and actually try to imagine yourself having a conversation with people in the other seats in that furniture layout. Does everyone have kind of a place to be able to put their drink down? All these little things make a huge difference when you have people over and you're actually experiencing the space. A furniture layout that actually encourages conversation feels much more feels much more warmer and enjoyable. And I think your guests will really notice this in your space. Next tip, mix old with new. Mix in vintage and thrifted pieces with modern, newer pieces. This can add a lot of character into your space and make your space feel more lived in and collected. This is a good way to find unique pieces for your home. Plus it can help you save a lot more money for those newer expensive pieces. If your home is a new build, lean into more vintage pieces to make it feel a bit more lived in. And if you live in an old home that had already has a lot of character, add some more newer, modern furniture to help it feel more elevated and less dated. My next tip is to play with scale and proportions. They can really be used to emphasize the importance of an object. So we as humans judge the scale of an object based off our body size. So scale and proportion is really about the experience of someone walking through a space or through a building. So when you're sourcing furniture or decor for your space, think about how the scale and proportion of these objects might feel in relation to the size of your space. So tall ceilings call for larger, wider furniture, whereas small ceilings might call for smaller, more modest sized furniture. Also remember to always leave empty space. Empty space is still space that you have to consider. 
your brain actually perceives the size of the space by how much empty space it has to walk through it. Next tip, incorporate different textures throughout your space. This is something that you'll notice in professionally designed and furnished homes. They have a variety of different textures. So the contrast between different textures is what adds so much interest to your space. So what you can do to create contrast between textures is pair something smooth with something rough. So something like a smooth marble countertop beside a rough aged wooden table. I find this tip really makes a huge difference, especially if your home is very monochrome. It breaks up having the same tone all around your home if you can have different textures in that tone. My next tip is to use natural materials materials where possible. Obviously I know today where it's already hard to buy groceries, it's not always possible for a lot of us to have these natural materials in our home, but I found that the trick here is to use natural materials in small doses throughout your home. So you don't need to have all your floors in real hardwood or real marble countertop, but instead you can use these real materials in much smaller doses. So things like marble trays, wooden pieces of furniture throughout your home, is that you can really tell the difference between real wood, marble, or stone compared to any plastics or synthetics. No hardwood floor or thrift a vintage wooden stool as, as a piece of decor. By kind of sprinkling these, na these natural materials throughout your home, you can still have that touch of luxury and that connection to real materials in your environment and still staying on budget. The style homes always have artwork or some kind of photography in your home. You can enlarge your personal photos and have them printed and framed. You can easily do this. And for artwork, don't just think of artwork as something that's two-dimensional and has to be hand-painted. It can be ceramics that you might have made, framed sketches, and even personal items that might be plane tickets from a trip that you went on that you really enjoyed. You can really have fun with displaying art in your home and it doesn't always have to be expensive art. You can also print your photos in black and white to make them feel a little bit more sophisticated. The next tip is to layer different types of lighting. Lighting can make or break a space and can be a pretty inexpensive way to level up your space. Something to keep in mind when you're picking out light bulbs for your space is you'll see a number with a K beside it. And that's called the Kelvin scale, which actually tells you the color temperature of that light bulb. So depending on the room that you're going to be lighting, for living rooms and bedrooms, you want to use something that's 3000 Kelvin or under. This will create a warmer white light that's good for relaxing. For areas that require higher focus, like kitchens, bathrooms, workspaces, you should use over 3000 Kelvin. So there's three different main type of lighting in space. Ambient lighting is kind of like area lighting that will light up the entire space. Task lighting, so think of table lamps, lamps on your side table, under, underneath upper cabinets on your countertops, and accent lighting, which can be above art pieces. You can also use accent lighting on, on your walls or, or even lighting but placed in plant pots and really lights up plants and can show off their form. Make at least one risky choice. And I don't mean drink red wine on your white couch. When you're furnishing or decorating your space, choose at least one item that is kind of risky, dramatic, or will pop in your space. Some examples are choosing a dramatic, bold marble table through colored rugs, a bold light fixture in your space. Another good way of doing this is through choosing bold wallpaper is to use all your senses. Think of every small detail as you're walking through your home and use all five senses. Something like scent can create a mood in your space. You can do this through candles or essential oils. Grapefruit essential oil in the morning can make you feel energized and more awake. Lavender in the evening can feel very relaxing. For sound, play music or have background sounds in your home. But you can also have sounds of birds or waves in the background. It can really give you the feeling of being on vacation or being in nature. Fire crackling sounds are really nice if you're cozying up on the couch with like a bunch of girlfriends, having wine. Basically, you want to create an ambience with these sounds. For taste, have a bowl of gummies or candies on your table bowls of pistachios or different nuts because these tend to last a while and not go stale. And you don't need to have these out all the time. It's a really nice touch if you have people coming over and it feels very luxurious. And for sight, so obviously you can create visual interest through your furniture and decor throughout your home. But another thing I like to think about when playing with visual senses is mirrors and reflections. So there's two things about mirrors that I wanna bring up. You can place a colored mirror in your home. There's also colored asymmetrical mirrors or mirrors that are finished in a way to make them look a little bit antique. I think these are really unique touches into your home. Another way that you can play with mirrors is the way that you position them. When thinking about where to place your mirror, think about the experience of it. If you hang your mirror on a wall that is painted a plain white, maybe the wall behind you that will be reflected into the mirror is a fun bowl of wallpaper, artwork that can be reflected back onto the mirror on it, or the other way around. This just changes the experience when people look into their mirror and also offers a little opportunity for a selfie. Okay, and the last one is touch. This brings it back to adding different textures throughout your home. The contrast between all these textures will really add depth and dimension to your space. I hope these tips help. If you have any other tips, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.